Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Thrive. And we're so incredibly excited yes. to have this opportunity to connect with you. If this is your first time, welcome. Give us a minute. I believe, I pray that God's going to do something in our time together that's going to add significant value to your life. And if you are a part of our Thrive Tribe, you're a regular participant in what God is doing through this teaching ministry. We're so grateful to have you. I want you to put some fire, fire in the chat today. Yeah. We're going to start with that yeah. because that fire is a symbol of the way we commit to live life as, as those who are in pursuit of the John 10, 10, 10 life. Nine. Not sinking, not surviving, but, but thriving. thriving. That fire represents zeal and zest and passion. <laughs> and that is the way we are approaching life. Lord, I'm running. Trying. Trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half. Ninety-nine and a half. Just, just won't do it. Just won't do it. <laughs> and we believe that thriving, uh, that God brings thriving into our life on two lanes, two mm -hmm. roads. Mm -hmm. One road is a road of principles. Mm -hmm. You need the right principles to thrive. Right. And then the other road is a road of power. power. Yes. You need God's power to thrive. And that's why we begin with a time of prayer. So thank you for sending in your prayer requests. There's a few we picked out we want to pray over today. Mm -hmm. So the first is, is uh, Brenda Knapper. We want you to know we've got your request. The nature of it is something I consider private. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to call that out. But I want you to know that the God who um, hears in secret mm -hmm is a God that can reward you openly. Yeah. Praying for Briola Nugent, praying for physical healing, and we pray that God touch you right where you are and touch you in every place that you need healed. Yep. Praying for Christina Willis, who's praying for favor with some entrepreneurial endeavors. And uh, when we look in the New Testament, we see entrepreneurs like Peter, who mm -hmm. was a fisherman and owned his own fishing business, and Paul, who was a tent maker, mm -hmm. who owned his. But we also see entrepreneurs mm -hmm. in the in the New and Old Testament, mm -hmm. Daniel right. was a business leader, but he was an entrepreneur. Right. Joseph was a business leader, but he was an entrepreneur. Nehemiah was an entrepreneur, worked in the sector of government. And so whether it's entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. God uses them both. Right. And I think sometimes in culture, one is exalted over, over the, the other, other. Right. when they're both equally important and both equally impactful. And so we're praying for God's favor for you, Christina. We're praying for Constance Kinder, who's praying for financial provision to finish her doctorate. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. We've been there, done that. Been there, done that. My Lord. <laughs> Felicia Hatton, we're praying for favorable employment. God opens doors no man can shut. And Latonya, Latonya McCrory, who's playing, praying for wisdom and guidance. So yeah. we're praying that God does. So we got those requests. And as we do each week, we want to again put that email address up on the screen so that if you want to send us requests, so our team can pray over them during the week. We want to receive that. And as we pray, you can put your requests in the chat. God sees and God will reward. Just putting that request in the chat, especially if it's not private in nature, is a way you can make your request known to him according to the word of God. Pastor, would you just pray over these Yes, requests? Lord. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful and thankful that your ears are open to our requests. And so now, Lord, we lift these requests up unto you now, mm. and we trust, God, that you are faithful to your word to perform all that you have promised in your word that you will perform. And God, we count it done now. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, listen, so grateful to be here with you today. And uh, this is, um, man, this is going to be an exciting time. I love it. We are in a series <laughs> called It's About to Get, get better. better. And we're using the book of Hebrews as a blueprint to better. Yeah. And um, God, God makes provision for his people in a number of different ways. But there are two primary lanes that God's provision rides on. It rides on the lane of principles mm. and the lane of power. Mm. Right. So. I think it's important that we understand the necessity of both, mm -hmm. that we need principles, which is the path to God's promises. Uh, Andy Stanley calls it the principle it's of the, the path, path. Correct. that your direction, not your intention determines your destination. destination. Right. But we need power mm -hmm. sometimes to go the right path. We need mm -hmm. faith to take a path that is a lot of times countercultural. Mm -hmm. um, and so. That's what we're on in this uh, in this series, and we're doing something a little different. We had a break last week. We, it was fire night in mm -hmm. New Jersey, so we released that message. But um, we said we had skipped a very significant verse in chapter four, and our life can't get better, get better. No. without this verse. So 
even though we're actually supposed to be in Hebrews 7 and 8 tonight, mm -hmm. we're going back to going chapter back. 4. <laughs> Can't miss that. Going back. Going Somebody back. put in the chat, bother it. We're going back. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna bother it. It's yes, something in no. Hebrews 4:12 that we need to bother because it contains a powerful principle that I think helps us make anything better. Mm -hmm. And then maybe next week we'll get back into chapter seven and eight. And um, I'm excited about it. Hebrews is a pretty exhaustive book, and mm -hmm. we have every intention of getting through <laughs> pulling principles from every single chapter because it's such a rich book. But I wanna we're gonna title tonight's teaching. Uh with a question, right? It's an interrogative. Interrogative. Are my feelings Feelings. fooling me? Come on. Woo. Somebody just put, wow. wow. In the chat. Are my, my feelings, feelings fooling, fooling me? me. Mm. All right. So this series is about to get better. It's based on this premise. This is really interesting. Um, uh, that improvement mm. doesn't happen automatically. Mm. It requires intentionality. intentionality. Yeah. Like that is the unspoken conviction um, that is driving everything we're mm -hmm. communicating in this mm -hmm. in this teaching. It is like it is the foundation that everything we're teaching is built upon. Yeah. And that is when it comes to spiritual, emotional, relational, mm -hmm. financial advancement, improvement. Right. You don't catch health. That's you right. catch sickness. sickness. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. That without being intentional, intentional, you're gonna drift into postures and positions and places mm -hmm. you don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. And so improvement requires intentionality. This is why we can say with a degree of prophetic conviction, it's about to get better because we are about to be intentional Come on. about Come on. making it better. That's not just some pie in the sky, mm -hmm. by and by church colloquialism. Mm -hmm. We're saying God has given us the power to co-create with him That's a it. future. Good God no, Almighty no. that aligns mm -hmm. with his plans for our life. And so when we, with his power, mm -hmm. follow his principles, principles, we can say prophetically, it's about, about to, to get, get better. better. Because the principles better. lead to his promises. The avenues lead to improvement. Mm -hmm. And so this isn't just something we're saying. We believe this. That's a, Why am I folding my arms like I'm ready to fight? You, 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 you mean it. You mean it. You, this means business. And Pastor, I love it. Like coming in, especially coming in, the year is still pretty new. And, you know, we make these New Year's resolutions that yes. should be revolutions. And sometimes we don't have the necessary plans in place. You said it too fast, Doc. Yeah, you yeah, said it. New yeah. Year's resolutions. Versus New Year's revolutions. Good we don't God. need resolutions. We Do need you want a revolution? Do you want a revolution? <laughs> and, and, and sometimes we don't have plans because plans are in place when the inspiration and the motivation were off. Good gosh. Yes. Like, your, your yes. plans keep you honest. Come on. And I tell people like my, my blessing, my greater, my, my better. It's not going to take me by surprise. Yeah. I planned this. Did you hear what he just I said? I planned to get I better. I planned it. I planned to get in shape. Yes. I planned for my finances to get better. I yeah. planned. So it, it ain't, it's not, it may be a surprise to you, yes. but because I planned for this. Yes. I planned it. A hundred percent. Yeah. A pastor, and here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> God is a planner. God is a planner. So if God is a planner and we're made in his image and likeness, if we're emulating him, if we believe he's the blueprint to the best life, if God is a planner, then we need to be planners also. When Jesus was born was not random. God planned Come on. it. Where Jesus was born was, was not, not random. random. God, God planned, planned that too. Come it was on. prophesied. That's how we know it was a part of a Come plan. On. Micah said that he was going to be born where he was born. <laughs> Isaiah said. He was going to be born to a virgin. Yeah. These were hundreds of years yes. before the birth of Jesus, Jesus. This, which lets us know God, God is had a plan. plan. And so we have, and watch this, and God's plan improved the world. Come on. Our My plans God. are going to improve, improve the world and improve, improve. our life. Come on. Somebody, I want you to make this declaration <laughs> tonight. Put in the chat. I got yeah, plans. I got plans. I got plans. I got plans to be blessed. Come on. I got plans to be used. Mm. I got plans to be whole. Mm. I got plans to be more anointed. I got plans to be more fruitful Come and on. more faithful. I got plans. plans. I got plans. I plans, love that. Plans. I got plans. So it requires intentionality. Intentionality. So it's a we you know things are it's about to get better because we plan on it getting better. Yeah. And we plan on working these principles. And here are here's one of these principles or laws like mm -hmm. you can use that word interchangeably. Mm -hmm. Right. That is key and critical to um, 
things getting better, mm -hmm. to us experiencing improvement. And it's a law or the principle of detachment. Mm. Come on. That, that is literally what this book is. This book is about spiritual leaving and cleaving, Come honestly. On. I love it. Yeah. It is. It is it's about leaving mm. old covenant, cleaving to the new covenant, mm. leaving what was, cleaving to what is. And Pastor, I really think we underestimate how important leaving and cleaving, cleaving. is because both of them require intentionality. Yep. yep. Requires intentionality, requires us doing something. And, and I want to say, nothing gets better by doing nothing. I just want to put that out there. Because sometimes we try to get better by avoidance. Mm. You know, mm. like if I ignore a thing, it's going to get better. Mm. If I don't do it, if I don't address it, it's going to get nothing gets better by doing nothing. And we have to be intentional about this detachment. Now, when you just said that, somebody should have, that's taking notes should have wrote that down or something. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Gets better. <laughs> nothing. Gets better nothing. by doing nothing. Watch this now. This is powerful. Mm -hmm. Because I think, <laughs> I think there are certain phrases, right? Uh -huh. And frameworks that we, that we kind of work with in church that are like incredibly profound. But mm -hmm. because we use them so frequently, we, we fail to recognize how profound they right, actually are. Right, right. So there's this, like in certain church settings, you probably heard people say like, hey, I'm about to come out. Uh-huh. Yep. I'm getting ready to come out. Ready. Uh -huh. And sometimes I feel like we can just treat that not as a declaration of faith, mm -hmm. but just as a, I got you. A, an inspirational Hello. statement. Come right? on. Uh -huh. But no, Hello. because leaving requires intentionality. I can say I'm about to come, come out. Why? Because I plan on it. I plan on it. I don't plan <laughs> on staying here. Y'all are, come on, tribe. They're not I didn't talking. Talk They're not talking. They're not yeah. talking. I'm, you get, how can you say you're getting ready to come out? Because I plan I'm on it. I plan on it. I plan on it. I realize and recognize that I need to leave this yeah. and I need to cleave to something else. I need to leave this mindset. Mm -hmm. I need to leave this method. Come on, whatever <laughs> it is, I'm coming out because I plan on it. Woo. See, Pastor, it's important for us to understand these, like these two lanes I've been talking uh -huh. about, principles oh, and power. Right. Uh -huh. I don't. I, I I think one of the avenues of the enemy. Watch this. If the enemy can't keep you from possessing something, mm -hmm. he wants to keep you from properly perceiving what you already possess. Ooh. Ooh. Come on. If yeah. he can't stop God from giving it to you, yeah, he wants to block your awareness of it so you don't I use it. it. But a lot of what God promises to do is according to the power that's at work in you. Yeah. Watch the book now. <laughs> Come on, watch, the book. listen to the, the book. book. Am I in the book? book? We're in the book. Listen to what the book says. Uh -huh. Now unto him who is able to do, to do exceedingly, exceedingly. abundantly, abundantly yeah. above all, all that we you ask, think, or imagine. Mm. But that's not the end of the text. Nope. That's where we stop talking, but that's mm. not where God stopped talking. Come on. God said exceedingly, Abundantly Abundant. above all you ask, think, or imagine, according, according to, to the power that <laughs> work. Look me up. It's Ephesians three twenty. Uh -huh. Fact check. Work it. Yeah. According to the power that is at work where in you. you. My God. God Almighty. My God. Somebody say it's in me. It's in me. It's, it's in, in me. me. It's in me. So the enemy can't stop God from giving that, giving me that power. Oh, he can't stop me from possessing it, but he can stop me from properly perceiving what I already possess mm. and not putting to use the power that I have. Oh, now I want indeed. everybody that is watching this right <laughs> now that realizes there's something you need to leave, whether it is a mindset, a viewpoint, a perspective, a way of doing things, whether it's people pleasing, I don't know what it is. Whew. I need you to declare to that thing, mm. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm Why? Because I plan on it. I plan on it. Because he gave me power to. <laughs> he gave me power to. You know, Pastor, I was just thinking about Good God. this whole thing about uh, leaving and cleaving. And one of the, the, the words, that the phrases that popped up in my spirit was trust issues. Sheesh. And the reason that some of us can't leave a thing yes. in order to cleave to the right thing yes. is because we got trust issues. <laughs> and as faithful as God has been to us. Yes. Sometimes yes. I wonder why we have trust issues. Pastor, that's, that's powerful. Yeah. We need to own that, though. Yeah. Some of us, some, of, some trust issues are greater than others. Right. But all of us have them. <laughs> I have them. Yeah, I got them. 
You have I come got, on. Yeah. You have we all don't have them in the same area. Right. Right? Right. Right. Right? Because because faith in one area doesn't always mean faith in, in another, another area. So the presence of watch the presence of faith uh is also an indication of the presence of trust. Mm. Right? Because mm. when they show up, they always show up in the car together. Mm. Cool. They always ride together. <laughs> always with faith, faith and trust. trust. Always, always ride, ride together. together. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, yeah. you have faith in yeah. who you don't trust. You to, to, <laughs> See, because a person can have the power, mm -hmm. but you also need to know they got the willingness. Mm. And whether or not they got the willingness is a trust factor, uh -huh. not just a faith factor. I love it. Because some people got the power to help you, mm -hmm. but they're not willing to help you. Yeah. You don't trust them to help you. Mm. That's my but, God. But you're right. We 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 all have these. We have these trust issues. Trust it's issues. like, it's like, sometimes we we have more faith in what we have hold of in the present mm -hmm. than to believe God. Yeah. For what He's calling us to. Yeah. It's like we losing something. Yeah. You know, and 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 I just believe that there are there are no losses in God. Yeah. You know, we That's may right. experience some you know some some challenges. We may be uncomfortable in seasons, but. There are no losses in God. Yeah, come no on. Loss. I can't on. lose. I can't lose in or with God. Yeah, yes, yes, indeed. Yes, you indeed. know what? And you said I you can't said, lose when I'm with you. When I'm with you, I'm talking about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put in the chat, <laughs> Jesus. I can't lose when I'm with you, and I think that's that's we have to trust. I, I want I want us to understand, guys. Trusting God means mm -hmm. not just trusting his person. Mm -hmm. And when I say person, his nature, is yeah, it good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. character, is he it, is, is, is it trustworthy? Mm -hmm. It is also trusting his principles. You understand? So you can, you can believe that I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. that's, that's my, right? You're trusting my character. But if you need direction somewhere, you also got to trust the directions that I'm giving you. And those are two different, two different degrees things. of trust. Right. And so this is why we're talking about these principles, mm -hmm. because there are times people trust this person. Mm -hmm. You're good, you're kind, you're faithful, but then don't trust his principles. Wait a minute. What you mean, love my enemies? Time yeah. out. Come on. Let's be honest there. Mm. Let's be honest. Somebody put in the chat. Keep it real. Keep it real. <laughs> Let's be honest. Keep You're like, real. wait a minute, God, I love you and I know you're good, but wait love my enemies. Come on now. What, what's up with that? Come on. Yeah. Bless them uh, that are persecuting me. Yeah. Wait a minute now. Now, he didn't say, don't just, he didn't say refrain from persecuting them back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, bless them. He said, bless them. See, that's, that's different. <laughs> yeah, no, See, a lot of people think we're doing the right thing when uh, we don't do to them what they right. did to us. No, we God's like, no, I'm not just saying don't do something bad. I'm saying do something good. Woo. So it's like, God, I trust that you're good, faithful, kind. I trust you're a person. But that principle over there, yeah, that's... Lord, I believe, but help my help, unbelief. Help, help me, Lord. Give me strength. <laughs> Give me power. Think you get it? And that's where this principle of detachment comes right. in. Right. You got to trust this. You got to trust it. That your ability mm -hmm. to detach from something old affects your ability to, to experience, experience something, something new. new. Man, that's... That Lord attachment is, is, is good, man. It's, it's I got to believe powerful. that. Yeah. I got to believe that. Remember ye not the former things. Mm. Neither consider the things of old. Is that what the prophet that's, said? That's what the prophet said. Behold, I do. I'll do a new thing. <laughs> I'll do a new I'll thing. New thing. Uh -huh. Here's what Paul said. Uh -huh. I do not count myself to have apprehended. But this one thing. This, that's Philippians. But this one thing I do. Forgetting Maybe those things that are behind me. And reaching for those things that are in front of me. I press. press. <laughs> I press. There are things we got to detach from. Uh -huh. Let me testify. You always testify. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> You're going to be quiet. I'm be quiet this week. I done been called Mahakas. <laughs> Every time they see me, Mahakas. That's I'm what through. people call yeah, you. Yeah, Mahakas. Pastor Mahakas. Yeah, I'm, I'm through. I'm through testifying. I'm going to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, I oh, Lord. <laughs> Y'all have to watch. If you didn't watch, there, there's an episode where we where he testified back in college days. College days, guys. Long, long, long time ago. He testified about a boomerang experience. <laughs> God used it. <laughs> well, God, God used it to humble him. He humbled him, man. 
And so, like, one of the things <laughs> I have to detach from in this season, we're in a season right now called Seek Season. Yeah. That's what the way we frame the Lent season at Change Church. And I'm in this season right now where I've got to, re- here's what I've got to detach from. I got to detach from my tendency to pursue shortcuts. Mm. Whoa. Whoa. Did y'all see y'all? Y'all come on. Come, come on. on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm testifying. Come on. I have to detach in this. Ooh. My inability to detach from that, that's Ooh. old, mm. is affecting my ability to experience something new. See, I'm accustomed to, and I believe in quantum leaps. Uh-huh. I believe just because God's doing it big, he doesn't have to do it slow. Right. And there are certain areas where you experience quantum leaps. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that God is endorsing shortcuts. Mm. And so what do I mean by that? Let's just take something like my fitness. Mm. I've been wrapped, I've been locked into being a much better steward of my temple, not Mm -hmm. just aesthetically. Mm -hmm. I've I've been to fitness for a long time, but like really dialing in this year. And there are a couple of things my trainer has been telling. He's like, hey, get a gallon of water, Mm -hmm. right? You gotta do that. And then my functional medicine doctor has been on some things just in terms of, uh, I don't have what they call leaky gut, Mm -hmm. which is, I'm not getting all, all into okay. that, which which can lead to a lot of digestive issues ah, and stuff I like that. I, I don't have it, but it's like, hey, it, let's get ahead of some stuff so that it doesn't. Do, so there, there, there are certain things like, little, little, and I'm just like, all right, a gallon of water, like 120 something ounces that's a, lot of water. a day. That's okay. a lot of water, right? Lot of water. Then at my age, that, that, that's a lot of water. I just leave it at that's that. That's a lot of water. And uh, I'm getting like 80, 60. 80. <laughs> and then when we're doing like weigh-ins and progress photos or whatever, I'm not happy with my results. Why are you not happy with your results, Darius? You t- you're trying to, you're trying to take, take a shortcut. shortcut. Lord, no. <laughs> so I could have reached my goals if I hadn't wasted time trying to take, trying to take a shortcut. Because shortcuts take longer. Lord have mercy. Come on. Come on, dog. That's somebody's word right there. Shortcuts take longer. I got to detach from that and I got to work the plan. Work the plan. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. So I don't know what you have to detach from, but all of us have something. You have something we need to detach from. Mm -hmm. And so. And that's good, Pastor. And here's another principle, Pastor, that's important. Detachment requires a device. (laughs) If you're going to detach from something, Mm-hmm. We need to know what device to use. use to the test this is why we wanted to come back to Hebrews 4.12. Yes, sir. Because yes, Hebrews sir. 4.12 mm-hmm. tells us the device we need to use whenever it's time to detach. It's the word of God. <laughs> hey, the word of God. <laughs> hey. Come on here. My, 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 my. Hebrews my. 4.12. Yes. For the word of God uh-huh. is alive uh-huh. and active. Uh-huh. Come on. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's alive. It's, 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 it's. It, it is, watch this, it is what Paul tells Timothy, God breathed. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is animated. Uh-huh. It is different and distinct uh-huh. from any other book. It's the living. Because it is alive. The essence of God is, is in his word. Ooh. So when I write a book, all you get is my brain. Uh-huh. You don't get me. Uh-huh. But when you get the word. But when you get the word, get whatever, what God breathed into man in Genesis Ooh. 1 to make him come alive. Uh-huh. Is what he breathed into the book. Work. Come on, Jesus. Come on. So when God breathed into Adam in Genesis, what that did for Adam mm-hmm. in Genesis, mm-hmm. when we lean into the, the word, word, it does that for us. Oh my God. Something's getting ready to come alive. Mm. Dead things come Get back it. to life. <laughs> Out of order it's, things. Come back into order. Lord it, Jesus. It's, it's alive. So when I'm reading this book, God's breathing on me. Uh-huh. He's doing for me and in me what he did to Adam. In the garden. Oh my God. It's alive and active, mm-hmm. sharper okay. than a double edged sword. sword. Mm-hmm. And here's the phrase mm-hmm. we're going to lean into in our time together. It penetrates even to the dividing of the soul and spirit, spirit. joints and marrows, and judges. It judges the thoughts and the, and the attitudes of our heart. Of the heart. Woo. Wait a minute. Here it is. Mm-hmm. Some of us can't <laughs> detach. Right. Because our feelings fooling us. The only reason 
I spent close two months now because mm -hmm. I started this new workout regimen on January 1st. Mm -hmm. The only reason, <laughs> unless I'm a fool, I might be. <laughs> the only reason I've been pursuing a shortcut for two months, uh -huh. when if I hadn't pursued a shortcut, I'd be close to my You'd goal. Close to your goal, right. It's because my feelings fooled me. Ooh. My God. I didn't feel like it. Oh, I didn't feel God. like drinking all that. Mm. See, come on now. It wasn't that I didn't understood what he, understand what he said. Man. I knew exactly what he said. Lord. He didn't speak Hebrew. Nah. He spoke English. He spoke English. One gallon of water. Mm. I did the research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How many ounces? I know. My God. I didn't feel like it. My feelings were fooling me. My God. And, that's, and that is a reality for many, many people, people when it comes to detachment mm -hmm. and attachment. Yeah. Our feelings are fooling us. us. See, the reason we had made some of the changes we need to make, you don't feel like it. Mm. Come on. Come on. We hadn't dropped that mindset. We, we don't feel like we it. Don't that feel have, it. We don't feel like it. <laughs> and the book says this is why we need the word. Because your spirit and your feelings, here's the, are analogous to joints and marrow. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what's scary, guys. Because mm -hmm. see, my feelings are fooling me. And sometimes people don't detach. And this, is, this, was, this was the issue with people in the text. Mm -hmm. What was their soul, they thought it was their spirit. Mm -hmm. So they holding on to the law because they think it's God. It's God. My God. And it's not, they missing God. Yeah. But they think it's God. They think it's God. Did y'all hear what I just said? <clears throat> because the, the, the feelings realm, I mean, the feelings reside within the realm of the soul. Mind, will, emotions, imaginations, mm -hmm. affection. Mm -hmm. So when the Bible talks about your soul, your mind, organ of thought, your will, organ of decisions, mm -hmm. imagination, mm -hmm. affections, and, uh, 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 and um, emotions. So when you deal with imagination, that is your envisioning. Right. And so mm -hmm. when you envision a positive outcomes, it mm -hmm. produces faith. Mm -hmm. When you envision negative out outcomes, it produces worry. Mm -hmm. So all worry is, is misuse of imagination. I want you to think about I, that. I hope they're getting this. <laughs> I hope they're getting this. <laughs> it's, but that's the soul. That's the soul. Right? right. That's mm -hmm. the soul. Mm -hmm. And it can feel real. Real. Yep. You can be, we can be worried about something that will never happen, but it feels so real. And so what happens is there are things that we think are God. We think it's the spirit, mm -hmm. but it's the soul because they are so intertwined. It is like joints and marrow. Yeah, that's the connection. Yeah. yeah. See, this is scary. Yeah. Because there are so many people yeah. that have not detached in the name of God told me to stay. God told me to stay. Yep. And you feel it. This is, I want y'all to sit with this. Mm. Here it is. The Bible says the only sure way mm. to kind of draw that line between is this me or God is the word. word. Is the word. It's not how strong you feel it. And this is why the enemy wants people to operate in arrogance, really. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. 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 When I tell you arrogance is one of his primary weapons of mass destruction, because arrogance, watch this. Arrogance doesn't allow you to be open to realignment. See, see, there's some times where I can be off. Mm -hmm. And if I'm arrogant, I won't be open to hearing what I yeah, need to hear yeah, right. and seeing what I need to see, see to realign. Yeah. Are y'all getting this? And then, Pastor, it talks about this, 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 this imagery of the word being a double-edged sword. Yeah. Which means that the, the word has power to open us up. Oh, yeah. To penetrate us mm -hmm. in a way that reveals yes. the, the hidden things to us. Yeah. And when True you talk, And when you talk yeah. about arrogance, sometimes we are operating in such arrogance that we refuse to allow the word to open us up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we allow the word to open us up, the word not only becomes an X-ray, it becomes an MRI. 
Explain the difference, Doc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just X-ray is kind of like surface. Yes. Like bones, but the yeah. MRI goes deep. It, yes. It's able to capture details of tissue. Yes. The minute details, yeah. the, the, the small details yeah. where the, the X-ray just kind of captures a big picture. Yes, sir. But the MRI is able to capture the intricacies and it's able to pick up on stuff that the X-ray can't. Yes, sir. That the X and so the word of God is not, it's not just an X-ray, it's an MRI. Yeah. But when we operate in that arrogance, we refuse to allow God or the word of God to operate in a way that'll get that'll make us better. That's true. That is powerful. Because what you're saying aligns with this whole idea of. It judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Yeah. I know what I think my motive is. Mm -hmm. I don't really always know what my motive is. And the word yeah. will show you your real motives. The word will show, yeah. Man. You, you hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, yep. sir. It's like, so let's just take something. <clears throat> it applies to leadership. Mm -hmm. But we can apply it to any relationship. Mm -hmm. So... Leadership is not a role, it's a responsibility. I love it. Yeah. Right? I it's not it. a reward, mm -mm. it's responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so it comes with a certain set of responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And one of those responsibilities is having difficult conversations. It is like a person saying, the person who's leading mm -hmm. that is unwilling to have difficult conversations is the equivalent of a chef who's unwilling to cook. Mm -hmm. You can't call your chef, yourself a chef, chef if, you, if, you don't if you're cook, unwilling to you cook. cook. You can't do it. Can't do it. And so there are times when people will say things like, well, I didn't have that conversation because I didn't want to affect them. Yeah. I didn't want to hurt uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. I didn't want to make them uncomfortable. Right. And they really think that's the reason. Mm -hmm. And then there, there are times when there's some deeper reflection and they realize it wasn't about them being uncomfortable. It was about me being, being uncomfortable, uncomfortable, making them uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. You see, you see what I'm talking about? Yes, yeah. The Apostle Paul literally talks about the opposite of this in Corinthians when he writes them this letter and he says, I know some of the stuff I said rub you the wrong way. Mm -hmm. He said, I know it kind of made you feel sorry for uh -huh. He said, but I'm glad. Yeah. And then he says these words, godly sorrow leads. worketh or leads to repentance. My God. So, so sometimes we don't even know what our real motives are. Mm -hmm. And it takes the word, word. to open us up Give an MRI, uh -huh. put this in front of you, <laughs> and say, no, this is, this is not about them being uncomfortable. About this you. is about you, you being uncomfortable with them being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It's showing Man. them you pleasing them, but you're not loving them. Right. Yeah. You're, you're, you're enabling them, mm -hmm. but you're not really assisting them. That word gives us an MRI. Yeah. God Almighty. Opens us up. This, this is important, guys. This is important. Because the inner life of the Christian is a strange mixture of motivations Man. that are both genuinely human mm -hmm. and genuinely spiritual. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> it's it's, mi it's, it's mixture. A mix. It's a mix, yeah. Right. And it takes a supernaturally discerning <laughs> agent, such as the word of God, God, to sort all of this out. Mm. And we are theologically, pneumatologically. So when we say that, I, I hate throwing these words out, but what happens is a lot of times I learn these concepts like in seminary. Mm -hmm. So that those are the words that come to my mind right, first. Right. And, and I, I'm working on like making sure people. Understand. So one of the words for spirit is pneuma. pneuma. Yeah. Got me? Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about pneumatology, it's the study of the spirit. Of the spirit right. Okay. So it's like, all right. So different people believe. Different different people have different pneumatologies. We read the right. same Bible, but right. they yep. they got different views on what the Spirit does. Right. So we are we are considered continuationists. Mm -hmm. That means we believe in the perpetuity of spiritual gifts. Right. We believe in what John Wesley Let's would see. call some the second it's blessing. Mm -hmm. That there are there are there is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and then there is baptism, mm -hmm. or infilling experiences. It's not that you don't have the Holy Spirit and your heart yeah. going to heaven, but it's, so it's not much of how much of the Spirit you have, it's how much of the Spirit has you. you. Yeah. So that's kind of like where we land. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we believe. We believe that God doesn't speak outside the framework of Scripture, right? Correct. So if God says something, it's not going to violate Scripture, right. right? Right. Okay. But we do believe, based off of where we land, 
pneumatologically that that God, whether it's promptings, mm -hmm. whether it's intuition, yep. whether it's prophetic words, mm -hmm. that God does speak See. as long as it's aligned with scripture to his people. That's right. I am in ministry mm -hmm. because of that. I planted a church because, because of, of that. I married my wife because, because of that. Right. Promptings, leadings mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit. Right. So most significant moves that have happened in my life have come to that mm -hmm. here. So it's important. I also realize it is the place where Satan confuses awesome. most Christians the most. That's good. That's good. It is mm. an area where most of us are untrained. Mm. So it's been trial and error. And, and, and like we assume we can assume our sincerity is accuracy. Because I mean well, I'm hearing yeah. right. Yeah. And it is like, it is the place of like yeah. some of people's most consequential mistakes have been what they thought God Plus told them to do. Man. Who they thought God Plus told them to marry. Man. Because they don't realize that the inner life of the Christian mm -hmm. is a strange mixture of emotion mm -hmm. and spirituality. Completely human, genuinely human, mm -hmm. and genuinely spiritual. And feelings can mimic. God's voice. And, and Pastor, what, and I think what you're saying is no matter how quote unquote saved you are, mm. because we are, we have these mixture of feelings, it's possible to have our, our sight and our hearing skewed. Mm. Because wasn't it Jeremiah that God showed him a vision? And he That's said, right. what do you see? What do you see? And he said, this is what I see. I see such and such. Yeah. And God said, good, you see right. You see, Come on. Then he asked him again, what do you see? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right, yes, because sir. it's possible yeah. For us to see what God ain't saying. Yes. Did, did y'all catch that? Yeah. So when Jeremiah, he's talking about in the book of Jeremiah, right. like the beginning of Jeremiah, mm -hmm. you get to see God kind of calling Jeremiah into prophetic ministry uh -huh. and God assessing Jeremiah's readiness Ooh. for prophetic ministry. <laughs> Because a gifting does not mean readiness. So what God does is he gives him Wait a series a of visions. Wait and he says, minute. okay, Jeremiah, tell me what you see. Yeah. And then Jeremiah tells him what he's seen. And then God confirms you're interpreting what you've seen yeah. accurately. Right. Did you, why is this important? Because what's going to, oh gosh. Because what's going to happen <laughs> with Jeremiah is he's got a responsibility to release messages to the people. But his communication is going to be based off of his interpretation of what God showed him. Mm. So God can be showing him something. That's revelation. Mm -hmm. But then there's got to be the interpretation. And then the communication is from the interpretation. Yeah. yeah. It's not always. So that person's got to get the revelation right. Mm. Then they got to get the interpretation yeah. right. So they can have the communication, communication right. right. And so this is, this is, and feelings can get involved. In the revelation, uh -huh. and feelings can get involved yeah. in the interpretation, and, and feelings can get involved in the communication. And people's response can also, yes, uh, you know, if we're not their careful, feelings, like yeah, 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 that response to what we're saying, yeah, what we're what, what we're communicating. If you're not careful, we allow people's response, yes. to dictate how we communicate yes. and interpret. One hundred percent. Guys, this is, I, I, want, I want you, I want you, <laughs> this is so key and so critical because so many people are operating outside of wisdom. That's right. Because they're operating within feelings <laughs> because there is, there is a, they don't have it, they don't have any sort of filter My God. to put the feeling through mm -hmm. to see if this God is this God. Now watch what the Bible says. Test the spirit. And see. If it the spirit, is of God. To see if, if it it's of God. God. He's not saying check a feeling with a feeling. Right. He's saying put what I'm hearing through the filter of scripture. And if it doesn't, it doesn't fit through that filter, I don't care how strong I feel, feel it. Feel about it's it. not God. It's not God. It's not God. And so many times <laughs> our feelings are fooling us. There are times when we can feel, because feelings mimic godly traits. There are times when we can feel like we're operating with the fruit of patience mm -hmm. when it's actually the feeling of pleasing people. Mm. There are times where we can feel like we're engaging in the spiritual act of waiting on God when the truth of the matter is we're paralyzed by the feeling of procrastination. Mm. There are times when we think we're being <laughs> long-suffering with a person when we're actually Paralyzed, where we're actually uh, dealing with the feeling of being too lenient. There are times where we think we're acting with empathy mm -hmm. when we're really enabling. Woo. There are times when we think we're following God's leading, when we're actually following our like. Come on. Discernment can be complicated <laughs> because the inner life is a mixture. 
And it takes a supernatural discerning agent. Mm. You need the word, word of God, God. Because that is what divides soul and spirit, me from him. Me. Mm. Feelings from faith. Are y'all catching this? Yeah, it's heavy. Right? It's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. I, we feel like there's like one segment of the body of Christ mm -hmm. that is under-reliant on the spirit. Mm -hmm. Heavily leaning into the scriptures, they're under-reliant on the it. spirit. And there needs to be more balance right, right there. Right. Word and power, it. truth right. and fire, I right? It. I it's it. like, okay, there is... There is a form of godliness here that you have because you got a mastery of the scriptures, mm -hmm. but you're denying the power oh, thereof, right? right? Uh -huh. So that's one reality. Then mm -hmm. you got another reality where there's a tribe in the body that is heavily reliant on the, on the spirit, but then they underutilize the scriptures. Right. And so there's not accurate biblical theological grounding. So there's all of these words. And so they're like a first Corinthians mm -hmm. kind of tribe it's where it's like, these words uh, and God and he spoke to me, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But then when you ask to articulate some theology that actually supports that, then there's the inability to do it. And what and what wherever there is, watch this, whenever there is a uh, um imbalance, mm -hmm. it increases the like wherever there's imbalance, yes. there's gonna be error. Come on, I love it. My God. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, I love wherever it. there's it's imbalance, there's gonna be error. There's gonna be, be error. error. Hmm. Because I can have a mastery of the scriptures, but without the Holy Spirit's assistant, I, assistance, I can't execute anything mm -hmm. I see in scripture. You cannot love your in, loving your enemies is a supernatural act only that can be accomplished under the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Impossible to do it Impossible. without the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, mm -hmm. there also has to be an accurate understanding of principles. So I am not tossed to and fro. Oh. So I am not gullible. Yeah, and what happens doctor, is. Yeah. A lot of times people don't realize that because your inner life is a mixture, mm -hmm. it is a degree of arrogance to trust your ear mm -hmm. as much as most people trust it. And I've told people that before. I was like, you trust your ear a little more than mm -hmm. I think you should. It might be a little pride there. Gotcha. Because you, what, what makes you think you know this guy? Right. Right. Love, yeah. Right? Uh-huh. And this is why, because our inner life can be a mixture, mm -hmm. there should be Epistemology, Lord, here I go with these. Ones. Epistemology means is like knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. be epistemological humility, which means that you even even though you know a thing, uh -huh. because you know there's still stuff you don't know, know. You hold what you know no. with humility. humility. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you hearing what yeah, I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like, it's like, so th this is, this is so important, guys. I got to put my feelings, my leadings, my promptings through the filter, filter of, the of the word, word of God. Does yeah. this align with, with the word? Oh, and this is why the enemy wants us ignorant mm -hmm. of the word. Mm -hmm. This is why thrive is so important. This is why we literally, this is expositional in some sense, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's not verse by verse. Mm -hmm. It would take us three years just to get through Hebrews see, see, see. if we did that, right? Verse, right? But it is exegesis and expositional in a sense, an exposition of scripture. Mm -hmm. This is why we take books of the Bible on mm -hmm. Wednesdays mm -hmm. and we help you see how books of the Bible actually apply to your life in, currently in life, yeah. because the enemy operates in the arena of ignorance and whatever area you ignorant in, you're going to suffer in. Yeah, it's good. Word. And I feel like this strong burden for this mm -hmm. um no judgment like one i'm just i feel pretty clear that the the bible advocates for balance mm -hmm. in both of these areas truth and fire that there is a reliance on the holy spirit that is anchored by a mastery of scripture. Yeah. And so most, not most, but many believers are in tribes that emphasize one over the other. One over the other. It's like, oh my God, this person, they, they lay hands on me, they prophesied, they did this, they did other. It's like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible actually say in the New Testament about prophetic ministry? Yeah. And is your biblical framework for prophetic ministry personified in Old Testament characters? <laughs> See, I'm like Jeremiah. You're supposed to be like Jesus, man. 
I mean, your prophetic minute, right? Because the nature of prophetic ministry in the Old Testament right. was pre the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So there was no law and spiritual law in our members right. Right. to lead and guide us to truth. So now that people do have Holy Spirit, like the Numa Christos, the Spirit of Christ, is on the inside of them. What does prophetic ministry look like now? What does it look like now? What does God speaking to me look like mm -hmm. now? And so this is an area. Two weeks ago, mm -hmm. we were like, hey, we got to go back to Hebrews. We got to go back. We got to go back. We got to go get back. Because a lack of understanding of this has made people vulnerable to some of the attacks mm -hmm. of the enemy that come in the form of counterfeit promptings from God. My God. My God. And also, Pastor, it was just like, you know, if the enemy can't keep you from coming to the word, he wants to contaminate the words you get. And uh, I was just thinking about this whole analogy about how you handle the word, mm. you know, Man shall not live by bread alone, but out mm -hmm. of every word. So there's this metaphor of the word being food. Mm. And how if you mishandle food, there's potential to that's induce right. food poisoning. Yeah, that's right. And I think what we're doing here is important because we're trying to show you how to handle this word right. That's right. Because so many people have been food poisoned mm -hmm. by people who mishandle this word. 100%. And that, that kind of, I think, leads to what we, we, we want to share with you, because practically, and I'm a teacher of the word of God, so mm -hmm. I want to give you practical right. principles, right? Mm -hmm. These are not rules, but it's like, hey, what do I do with what I've heard? Right. And so there is a role that the Holy Spirit plays mm -hmm. in giving clarity in terms of what part of this applies to you and how to implement it in right. your life. But here are a few things to think through as you're thinking through that, because I, I think like there are benefits to getting this right yeah. that, are, that are priceless. Yeah. Like one of them is it gives you protection from deception. Mm. When you get, like when you, what we're about to teach you, if you do this, it gives you protection from deception. It gives you correction in your calamity. calamity. Right? So when you're in the middle of <laughs> catastrophe and calamity and you have somehow contributed to it yeah. by violating a principle, the word helps you correct that and align that so that you can start experiencing deliverance yes. from, not delay in mm. that calamity. Mm. And then it also gives you peace under pressure. Yeah, I love it, I love that one. Like it is, it is consoling. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? <laughs> it is it. when you experience Job-like seasons and you're surprised, it gives you peace because you realize this happened to Job. Mm -hmm. And so here's some practical things that that I feel like we should do as it relates to um, the proper utilization of the word mm -hmm. as a filter for feelings. Number one, study it. Mm -hmm. you, you, someone said to me that I was in an interview and they said, man, because I know you love to read. I said, wait a minute, stop. <laughs> You're making that assumption. I said, I don't love to read. I was like, what? Yeah. I don't you read? I said, I hate to lose. Mm. I don't know. I'd rather play video games than read. Ooh. I'd rather work out than read. I'd rather scroll than read. I'd rather, there's a whole lot of stuff I'd rather do than read. But I hate to lose. So I'm willing to learn. Mm -hmm. So you have to study it. Mm -hmm. First Peter 2 says, like newborn babes, crave spiritual milk that you may grow up by it in your salvation. Now that you've tasted that the Lord is good. good. <laughs> Paul tells, tells Timothy, study uh -huh. to show so yourself approved, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly, 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 rightly dividing the word of truth. Word of truth. No. Um, this is important, study it, but study it with epistemological humility. I believe my interpretation is right, but it could be wrong. Could be, that's potential. <laughs> Man, sometimes there's such arrogance Arrogous in the body yeah. when it comes to what they believe about scripture. It's like, you are so arrogant. And sometimes I'm listening, I'm like, you like strong with it and you wrong. wrong. <laughs> Everything is not subjective. Some stuff is up to, subjective. there is no private interpretation. Right. Right. right? Like there have been like people, 
Don't you wear no pants with me? I mean, strong. And it's like nothing against anybody who says that. But if that's your that's your preference, you can teach that as a preference. You can't teach it as a commandment and be aligned with scripture. You can't take a woman shall not wear anything that pertaining to a man in that historical context and apply that to true religion or whatever jeans people wear nowadays. Because what did men wear in those days? Yeah. They they didn't wear pants either. They sure. nope. What are we talking about? <laughs> So some stuff just is not, it's not, well, that's your view. Some stuff is just not, some stuff is true and some stuff is untrue. Right. So we got to study. Right. Second thing we got to do is we got to say it. It is written, I believe, therefore I've, I've spoken. spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. We got to speak in Joshua 1. God told Joshua, don't let the word depart from your lips. That's it. Yeah. Meditate on. Don't let it depart from your lips that what you're speaking mm -hmm. is you're speaking the word. And then last but not least, we got to submit to it. it. Do not merely. So that's here's my issue with my trainer. Mm -hmm. I'm not fully submitted. I can dress it up all I want. I can come up with another word to describe it. I could blame it on being human. Uh -huh. Here's the truth. I'm very clear on what he told me to do to reach my goal. I have to do it. I am not fully submitted. And I can't complain about the results I'm not getting if I'm not fully submitted. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. So we can hear a teaching like this tonight, Pastor, and be like on fire. Mm -hmm. And think something's changed. But I'm saying, no, 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 no. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Study it. Say it. And submit to it. Daily. Daily. Pastor, more practically, to submit to it is basically operating in obedience. Mm-hmm. Like, mm -hmm. And obedience is always rooted in the reality that God knows what's best for us. Mm -hmm. Even like your trainer, your trainer is mm -hmm. not telling you that arbitrarily. Yeah, that's right. He knows what you need to do to get the results you want. Mm -hmm. And so God knows what we need to do, not only to get the results we want, but to live the type of life we live. Yeah. Because if you look at Noah, a lot of people would say the ark saved Noah, but I would say his obedience saved him. That's right. That's a word. That's a word. It wasn't the ark, it's obedience. That's a word. Being obedient. That's a word. In a time that God yeah. told him to do something that yeah. didn't make sense yeah. because something was coming that didn't make sense. That's right. That's right. It's That's obedience. When I submit to the word, yeah. I obey it because I know God has my best interest at hand. Yeah. We don't want to create unnecessary spiritual anxiety for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to, the Bible says the just shall live by faith, faith. not fear. That's right. right. We live life right. in pursuit of getting That's it right. right. Some people live life scared of getting it wrong. Whew. That's not what we're trying to create. Mm. So we're trying to create a holy cautiousness. We're not trying to make you apprehensive, but a holy cautiousness and a holy humility that says, I think I know what I'm hearing, mm. but I need to hold what I'm hearing with humility. Mm. Because no matter how pure my intentions are, my inner life is a complication and a, and a compilation of soul and spirit. There's feelings, there's flesh, there's me, and there's God trying to get through in the midst of all of that. And so because that's a reality, I need to be humble and I need to take what I feel like I'm hearing and I need to put it through the filter of scripture. And, um, and I think if that is our intention, and none of us will do it perfect, I think if that is our intention, even if we miss it, God will respond to us yeah. the way Jesus responded to Peter yeah. when he got out of that boat and he began to sing. Uh, uh, because your intention, Peter, mm -hmm. was to obey me. Mm -hmm. I will save you. Yeah. He picks them up and he takes them back to safety. Mm -hmm. But Peter operated with a holy cautiousness mm -hmm. and humility. Because watch what he says. If it is you, tell me, tell me. to come tell to me. you right. on the water. I'm not going to assume. 
I love it. I'm not going to operate in arrogance. Mm. And because he demonstrated a holy cautiousness and a holy humility, God honored the intent of his heart. Mm. Lord, if I miss it, I it, missed it trying to get it. <laughs> and he will honor that. And we, we're going to pray that over you. Jesus' name. The most significant shifts in my life have been on the other side of divine promptings. Mm. But I put those promptings through a holy filter of scripture, mm. a holy cautiousness. Because I know that the Christian inner life is complicated and is mixed. Mm. And even those of us with the highest intentions of getting it right will periodically get it wrong. <laughs> That's what it means yep. to yep. be a human. So listen, I pray this added value to you. Um, yeah, as powerful. always, if there are prayer requests that you want to us to pray over and our team to pray over, email address is coming on the screen for you to send those requests to. And they're also going to put a lower third up for giving. This is a principle. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trust God's person. God is good. A good God has said this. He who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall reap bountifully. He honors the law of sowing and reaping. He's saying, hey, when something is adding value to you spiritually, you have a responsibility as you're able to reciprocate and sow back into the field you're harvesting from so that others can have an opportunity to harvest also. And we believe that this is a teaching ministry that God has given us to really help as many people as possible Learn how to live the king's way. way. Not culture's way, not church's way, way, but the king's, king's way. And we are committed to it. We want to be faithful to it. We're trusting God with the outcome of it. And we need people who believe in it, who see the value of it, to get behind it, yeah. to pray for it, and to invest in it. To say what they're doing with Thrive is bigger than or different from what? localized ministry yeah. in a local church. That's important. But this is a teaching ministry mm. to the body, mm. right? I'm yeah. not everybody passing a list of this. But God may have orchestrated a divine joining. Yes, Lord. And maybe I'm one of the voices that he has assigned in your life in this season to help you grow spiritually. And so because that is a ministry that has been given to the body, we could just, we could just, I mean, and I say this with all humility, I say this as a testament to the people that are part of our church, not to us and our teaching. But we could just do this a lot. We could just say, hey, we're gonna go to New Jersey and Atlanta and do this and just do it for the people that are in the room. Right. And people would get in cars. Yep. And some oh. people from time to time would get on a plane they come. to come and sit in a room. But we believe this is something God wants to do in the body, not just in our local church. Our local church bene uh, benefits from this, but it is not just for the local church. So. We thank you for sowing into the field that you're harvesting from, and God's going to honor that. Every person that we reach, every life that has changed, every person that stumbles up on this video, God gives you credit for yeah. helping that person get reached yeah. because of your prayers and your partnership. So thank you. Thank you. Those of you who do this every week, we see you. We're grateful to God for you. All right. So I want to pray real quick over the past. I would simply want to pray a prayer of discernment. Lord, yeah. give me eyes to see. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. what you are showing me. Yeah. I don't want to miss you. <laughs> you are my shepherd. Yes. And I pray that you're going to lead me to green pastures. Yes. In Jesus' name. Come on. Amen. Amen. God bless your family. We love you. Love you. See you next week. Well, listen, thank you for watching Thrive. I want you to make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our teachings. And remember, you can watch me live at Thrive every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care. I'll see you soon.